Hello and welcome to Building the Premier Accounting Firm. This is a podcast dedicated to accounting professionals to help you actually start, build, and operate the premier accounting firm in your area, offering quality accounting services, and at the end, getting paid what you're worth. As accounting professionals, I'm sure you're in a position, whether you're a solopreneur or running an accounting business, that you're actually interested in being that leader you need to be to offer quality accounting services, and most importantly, onboard and take care of your clients. And this is going to be the podcast where you're going to listen in, get those tips and tricks, and most importantly, the insights you need to be that leader. Now, in doing so, each and every week we have on this show experts that we bring on as guests. I'm your host, Roger Connect, president of Universal Accounting Center, and today's going to be no exception. I'm excited to have Troy Ballard on. Troy happens to be someone I've known for years. She is a highly experienced and certified professional bookkeeper with over three decades of experience in the field of bookkeeping. She started her own business in 2015, providing top-notch bookkeeping services to help businesses achieve profit and growth. In addition to her expertise in finance, Troy has a talent as a musician. She plays a guitar and writes songs and poems in her free time. She is also an avid dog lover and trains her pet for competition events. With her diverse interests and uh, extensive experience, Troy is a well-rounded and value asset to any organization. So, Troy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Roger. I appreciate it. I really have been looking forward to this ever since I was invited. So You're welcome, and thank you. Yeah, I, I feel you've got a lot to offer, especially in this community with the successes you've had. So here's what I'd like to do. Let's give it some context. Let's go back to a little bit of how you got into accounting and what what drew you to start your business in 2015. Well, in 1984, <laughs> which was a couple years ago, Just a few. I started working for my father. And he had a manufacturing business in Nevada. And I had taken some accounting courses and stuff like that. And he said, come in. I want you to take care of my books. And, of course, at that time, there were no computers. Mm -hmm. It was all paper and pencil and stuff. And that's where I started. And I did that for about eight years. And then, you know, life happens and we moved away. And so I spent most of those intervening years. I I worked for other companies and I worked as a full charge bookkeeper or I was a department manager, say for accounts payable or payroll or, you know, those kind of things. And so I did that in the intervening years. And then in uh, 2012, we moved to a really small rural town in Arizona and not a lot of job opportunities, but I did find one as a full charge bookkeeper for an electrical contractor who put me on a 90 day probation, which is kind of normal. Um, and it was a huge cleanup job. They had had a really big mess and I was getting down to ready to now, okay, now I'm going to go through and I'm going to re, you know, go through the income, the revenue and stuff like that. And it was, I was about 15 days short of my probationary period and I got let go. And I was, I couldn't understand why I had started questioning the office manager about some transactions I was seeing on the revenue side that didn't match anything. Wow. And (laughs) I found out about six months later, she was embezzling from the company. And it was a very small contractor too. So it was kind of sad. But at that point I went, you know, this is, I want to do this for other people, but I want to do it on my own. Yeah. So in 2015, I said, that's it. I'm not going to work for an employer any longer in this capacity. I'm going to figure out how to do this from home. And it was really about the time that virtual bookkeeping was starting to really grow in the marketplace. Maybe it was growing earlier than that, but I hadn't noticed, of course, working for other people. So that's where I got started. And the process, and it's been an amazing journey, to be honest, and the opportunity to see um, clients grow their business. Like the one client I have currently, still have her. Um, she, when we started, we, she was at 250 k a year revenue. Last year, she topped um, a million. So is that because of me? No, I don't think so. Because a business owner puts a lot of time, effort, and concentration into their business. Yet by having all the financial records and we actually institute a profit first cash management methodology into her business, it's just been amazing. When COVID hit in 2020 and the lockdown went in, she called me. She was very, very concerned about Uh her cash book, her cash position. And I was I was able to assure her that of all my clients, she was probably in the best cash position, <laughs> cash position of them all. Okay. And she had a life event happen and had to go away for six weeks. And even during so during all of that, she was 
comfortable. She was relaxed. You know, she just, she just understood that everything was being taken care of. So, you know, that's, uh, that's one of the things that I look for is that establishing that relationship. So when you bring up relationship, I want to ask about something that I know you're passionate about, which is this heart led business. What does that mean? Oh my gosh. You are right, Roger. That is such a passion for me. And it really has been all my life, but it's only been in the last 12 months or so that I've actually looked at heart-led businesses. Now, for me, the passion is in the health and wellness and what we might call alternative services okay. that are generally very small, solopreneur, um, and some wellness centers and things like that. So that's really, for me, a passion. But our heart-led business is any company that prioritizes the needs and well-being of the wider community in its decisions. It's, it's basically found on, on principles of empathy, compassion, and purpose. Because what they want to do, a heart-led business wants to make a positive impact in the world. They are not really that concerned on maximizing shareholder returns. I should caveat that. They're not con that's not their priority. Uh -huh. It is important, yet it's not priority. Because the ultimate goal is to create sustainable, ethical, and socially responsible enterprises that contribute to the greater good of society. That's what I define a heart-led business to be. Okay. And one of the things that I think is important to recognize here is sometimes in that culture that the business has, they are willing to make sacrifices and, and make adjustments and accommodations where profit isn't, as you're describing, the principal motivation. And so all of a sudden, what you're realizing is as you interact with management, the owners, there are some decisions there that may not be made solely based on the financial reports that we're providing. And this is partly because of their their mission statement. It might be part of their culture. It might be because of what they do as an industry. And that's important to understand as an accounting professional is you're going to be witnessing a client that could theoretically do things that you wouldn't agree with or wouldn't see as being the most profitable of things to do. But nonetheless, it is in line with their core objective. And it's nice to see that you're able to kind of work with these businesses and basically meet their needs from an accounting perspective. Yes. Uh, the, one of the things about the accounting services, you know, what happens in um, this particular demographic, what I've observed and what has been fed back to me is that there sometimes there's a because that what they're doing is they're offering their passion, whatever that is. Yeah. You know, so there there's a lot of emotion and there's a lot of that put in there. But on the other side of that, many of these solopreneurs and smaller businesses owners have some sort of shame about charging for their services. And that's one of the mindset things that I like to work with with a client that's in this niche is that is just to relieve that. It's like, it's okay to charge that. You know, it's okay to charge what you are worth. Yeah. Um, which is the same message out to accounting professionals as well. Now, I've met a lot of bookkeepers who are also hesitant. You know, there's training programs out there, you know, oh, charge what you're worth, charge what you're worth. And so I think it's just simply a mindset shift that you can do what you love and you can also make money. I love it. I love it. So Obviously, this is something that you're very specifically targeting, um, dare I say, niching to. So how do you market yes. a little differently your accounting services to a, a heart-led business, someone that's in that space? Well, one of the things that is important to me, like you mentioned earlier, is relationship. That's It's a big thing for me. It's one of the things that I've always brought into my business building. And with this particular niche, that is at the top of the list is to focus on building the relationship, you know, um, creating content that shares personal stories, you know, yeah. things like that. It's like, I ask, it's really interesting. I ask questions of a new client in a consultation and somehow or other, I don't know how I do it. There's no formula for this, but the questions I ask seem to like guide this person into the pain point. What is the bottom line? You know, what is, what is it that you're looking for? And <clears throat> this has an emphasis on the impact of the people in the business, especially the business owner. So it's the traditional marketing methods. I, I don't, they have changed so much in the last few years that I don't really know what that is. I just know that in this business, this, this niche, that people is really important. And 
people is, people are, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but you, we use language that r- resonates with them, like making a difference, sustainability, community impact, yep, yep, bringing your vision into the world, you know, those kind of things. Exactly. Um, and I have to demonstrate authenticity. Yes. That is, a, that is a really big thing because this niche is also looking for that transparency and authenticity. And they don't want to hear uh, me make claims that I can't substantiate, that I can't back up. Yeah. Right? So and so a- within the marketing part, Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say the idea behind this is that your marketing is more nurture based. They're trying to look for someone in the accounting space that's willing to have a relationship with them. The the uh, they're not alpha types. They're not going to be ones that are driven by necessarily all the data and information. They're looking more for someone that they can open up with, feel like they're understood, believe that they're in a safe place as they're having conversations with the accounting professional. They're wanting to work with someone I trust that is. You know, curious and intrigued by what it is that they're doing as a business model, more so than just the accounting that's going on. And so those are some of the elements that would resonate in the marketing space only because that's what this audience is drawn to. And so all of a sudden, if your marketing is in a line with what they're doing, they're going to be drawn to you as the accounting professional to meet their needs. So I was just going to throw that in there because that's what I'm hearing you describe is how they are mm-hmm. different in this niche, in this industry, than what you may find in, in perhaps more traditional business models and so forth. Is, is that a fair statement? Yes. It is a very fair statement. I mean, one of the things we, we, sh- we might keep in mind is that, you know, 99.9% of all the businesses in the U.S. are considered small by the ASBA. Now, that's le- that they deem that to be less than 500 employees. What I'm talking about here is more like a solopreneur or maybe a wellness center, which may have, you know, what they do is they rent space to practitioners and things like that. Um, and the marketing in there is really, like you said, it's, it's, it's like so pointed toward relationship. It's like, what is your vision? What is, what is it you want to bring? What is your passion? And it's like engaging in them in that conversation and sharing with them, it's like, yes, I have a passion. I have a passion for for supporting you and having your financial records be accurate and having your cash flow increase. And even in even in the marketing, it's like people they ask me, it's like, well, how would you market? And I said, well, for you, this might be a good place. And it comes down also to networking. It's this is a this is really huge in how we get into these heart led niches. Is that is that networking is more important? In fact, yeah. me personally, as I go on this adventure, I've booked vendor booths at psychic. They call them psychic fairs, uh-huh. wellness fairs, yeah, yeah, yeah. fairs. You know, they're everywhere. But having a booth there, not for the purpose of the traffic that's going to flow through, but for the practitioners that yes. are there. So there, so, so networking relationships, sitting down and and saying, wow, how come you got to, how come you did this? You know, some of the things, a lot of the things that I learned in the profit and growth program, um, from you, Roger, actually are, are, are like, I'm feeding that out to these people because it makes so much sense. It's like, tell me about you, tell me about you, tell me about you, tell me about your vision. Um, and being really clear is like, okay, is this your main source of revenue or is it something you want to be is the main source of revenue? Mm-hmm. Just asking questions and asking questions and, and listening. So that networking is really, I think, one of the biggest factors in marketing to this niche. I couldn't agree with you more because the nature being a heart-led business as you're describing them the very nature of who they are is relationship-based. They have relationships with their customers and they expect to have relationships with their vendors. And as an accounting professional servicing this community, they expect to have that kind of connection. And so for you to market to them, they're not going to be drawn to, say, an online ad. They need to actually see you, like you described, at an event where you have a booth. And as peers, it's all the other people that have booths, you interact, you're going to find that that interest and that connection that you're looking for. So I'm glad you brought up Absolutely. the psychic thing, because I think this is going to kind of lead into <laughs> what, what we're talking about here. Because when you say heart-led businesses, what do you find fits that niche? I mean, who's actually in that space? Um, I've got a number of industries I'm familiar with, but I'm just curious who you're working with and who do you find that you're drawn to? I find who I'm drawn to is um, more of the healing and wellness 
alternatives. And that could fall in the, it's like, I have one um, young client. Um, she's a yoga instructor and a dance instructor. This is mm-hmm. something she's been doing all her life. And she is very passionate about it. And so she works one-on-one with her clients or in group sessions, but she still provides that, that intimate interaction. And this I see is something that, you know, I can provide also only what I'm going to provide is, you know, I'm going to take care of your financial records. I'm going to take care, make sure that at the end of the year that you don't have anything to do other than here, here's my QuickBooks online access, go do my taxes like that. Um, Tax preparation is not something that MTV services currently does. So those kind of things is, it can be very intimate. And that is the other thing too, is that I have to be willing to open up and expose my vulnerability as well. And that is something I've noticed that, that when that happens, and I'm not talking about, you know, like laying down on the floor, please step all over me, but just opening up in such a way that this person who is so committed and passionate about what they're doing and what they're bringing out into the world sees that I have that same request for intimacy, you know, and, and that is really part of it too. It's, it's, I know it's a word that kind of might bring up some things for people, but it really is. We don't actually consider, I don't know, I've talked to a lot of different accounting professionals, but for me, when anyone invites you into their financial life, that is a very intimate relationship. That's my perspective. Well, I'm glad you brought it up because when you have these relationships with your clients, it typically goes beyond the financial. It typically goes even beyond the business. And when you're working with these heart-led businesses, it will get into very personal and family-type discussions. Uh, Tell me, when you have these conversations, what do you feel that the client is looking uh, looking for from you? Are they trying to find empathy, understanding, a safe place? What do you feel that you're offering them that they're not getting elsewhere? All of the above. And connection. This is a people business. And we can't forget that as accounting professionals. We cannot forget that on the other end of the Zoom call, on the other end of the phone, on the other side of the desk, however it is that we meet, or the other side of a vendor booth table, is it's a people. I'm, I'm not talking to their business. I'm speaking to the business owner. So I'm coming from, I'm a person. And uh, you're a person and we're going to create a connection or we're not. There's, it's, it's not a guarantee, but it is an intimacy and a connection that I find imperative. You know, it's, I don't really want to work with anyone who's not willing to kind of give a little back in the, of themselves. Um, I'm not really a, the type of person who's just like, okay, let's just stack them up and we'll just take care of this and not ever talk to them. Um, it's, it's much more personal for me. You know, I like how you're describing this because I believe our listeners can clearly see what kind of clientele you're going to be working with. There are business owners out there that see the accounting profession as just a necessary evil. It's what you pay to be in business. I've got to have my books done. I've got to figure out my taxes and that's just something I'm going to do. And honestly, it's a distraction from what I'm making a living doing, but it's something I have to do to take care of Uncle Sam. So there I go. And I bring this up simply to say that what they're looking for from the accounting professional is just very quick and simple information, high level. Did I make money? How much did I make? They're not interested in the details because they're living their business. They're running their business. What you're describing is someone entirely different than that person. The business owner you're describing is someone that wants to feel heard, listened, validated. They want to actually have a connection with you as you're describing. And I loved how you pointed out in that case, it is a people business. It's basically building a relationship. And ultimately that impacts the lifetime value of that client because we're going to retain them for years simply because they feel that we're an integral part of their business success. And it's not to say that the other individual who's more of the alpha type, more that's that's very driven in their business, that's showing an indifference to the numbers. It's not to say that they don't value what we're doing. They're paying for it and they definitely see the need for it, but it's a different relationship. And all of a sudden what you're doing is you're getting a little bit more intimate with these individuals where you're learning about their pains, their sor- their sorrows, their struggles. And you're oftentimes going to be there for them where no one else is. And all of a sudden they're leaning on you and you're going to learn things about them personally and professionally that probably no one else knows. And that's huge. Would you agree with that? I would. Um, I've had a couple recent incidences where I was 
I was contacted in a free free consultation because I offer a free consultation, 30 minutes. Usually it lasts longer than that, but <laughs> I don't care yeah. because I'm building relationship. I'm building rapport. But in it, recently, I've had a couple of free consultations where in the process, when we got down to the bottom of it, this client was actually crying because what was going on with them was so emotional for them because business owners do, and I think heart-led business owners especially have this deep, deep personal connection to what it is they're bringing into the world. And when you you ask them these questions and they start to identify and then they start to express, it's like, oh my gosh, this is what's going on with me. You know, this is broken down and, and, you know, uh, it's like I had a bill, I had someone who was managing my revenue and they were getting all my invoices out and they failed for three months and now I'm $80,000 in the hole. You know, these kind of things are huge impacts on these small business owners. And so for me, it's, it's always an opportunity to say, yes, let's work together or you need to do this first. You know, I had one client who was in such a, a cash thing that she's she's crying on the phone. She says, I don't even know how I'm going to pay my rent. And I was very, I was empathetic. But at the same time, I told her, sweetie, you need to take care of your survival. This is what you need to do before you try and launch out into all of this. Now, was that valuable information? Did I get a client out of that? No, but I did create a connection. And I did create a connection that is is going to and has got people to come and talk to me. So that that's the relationship. Now, do I go have dinner with her? No, <laughs> but that's what happens when you allow yourself to be a little open and be uh, non-judgmental, huge non-judgmental, and let these people say what they need to say. That is, I, I can't even describe how important that is to me. Well, I think it's also important to your clients. The people that you're resonating with value what you're describing. And I do feel that as accounting professionals, we oftentimes do know more about the business than anyone else in the organization other than the business owner. I do feel that we're aware of the struggles, cash flows, and so forth that family's not aware of, the employees aren't aware of. And so we become that trusted strategic advisor because at an emotional level, we're aware of some of those sensitive things. So this brings me to my next question. As you're describing all this, obviously you have a pretty good connection with your clients, but in some instances, this can be very draining. It can be very uh, heavy. And so for some people, they need a way of decompressing. They need a way of coping so that they don't take this home and bring those stresses and anxieties that the clients are dealing with and that we're trying to address home to the people that we matter that matter most to us. How do you actually cope with, deal, and um, let's say decompress from some of the stresses that you might be exposed to and interacting with at a client level? Well, one of the things that's happened over the past uh, four or five years is that I've become able to um, be very neutral about a lot of things in my life. And that includes taking in what a client tells me, having no judgment, seeing intuiting it's really more intuition seeing where i can like input some information that may help relieve that it may not but i don't actually i when i walk away from my computer i work from home so when i walk from away from my computer i'm going on to the next thing maybe that's sitting down playing a couple songs on my guitar taking the dog for a walk um loading her up in the truck and going out and doing some training of some kind so it's this isn't something that I can impart as a how to. I can't tell people how do you be neutral? How do you not allow it to get to you? I don't know how to tell you to do that. All I can say is that through my own personal journey, I have just come to a neutral place about it. There there's it's it's like nothing is the end of the world. Nothing is the end of the world. And sometimes as a small business owner, they may look at what's going on in their, in their businesses, you know, with their, if there's a lack of cash flow or they're having employee issues, whatever it is that's causing them that pain, they don't know how to be neutral about that. So I find it very valuable for me as their accounting advisor to stay in a neutral position. Uh, as a, as I don't, 
I don't know about other accounting professionals. I've taken on clients where I have seen some really intriguing expenditures. That's all I'll say about that. <laughs> <laughs> but and, and I think that's probably true of most bookkeepers. But um, it, it, but, but, and I think maybe that's part of it. It's like to see that. And it's like, well, you know, that's just an owner draw. I, it's like, <laughs> you know, that's not a business expense. And it it really supported me in being neutral about that. It's just to let go of any judgment about how people spend their money. What difference does it make how they spend their money? Unless I come to them and I say, well, you know, you should probably put this on your personal credit card rather than your business credit, credit card. That's it. That's my only recommendation yeah. because I don't care how they spend their money. Yeah. Well, there's a few things that I'd like to just compliment what you're sharing here. I love the neutrality. I think that's great. It's a wonderful mindset to be in. I think as parents, we sometimes, uh, well, we find ourselves getting there as we see our children make different decisions than we would. But when it comes to businesses, it's a similar type of a situation. And what we're recognizing is it's their money. This is their business. They get to do it as they would choose. And obviously, this isn't necessarily how we would spend our money, but this is something that, that they are passionate about. And we're bringing them information and they're going to make the best decision with that information for themselves. And so the neutrality that you're describing here is, I think, a, a very good quality as accounting professionals to just simply recognize because we can't get so caught up in how things are being done in the business because it's not our company. So I, I, I think that's a great piece of advice. The second thing I would add to that is the fact that as accounting professionals, we need to recognize that even when we're providing solutions, options, when we're providing maybe our opinions, that's just what they are. They're options, they're solutions, they're opinions, but they're not necessarily directives. The business owner has the choice of whether or not they're going to take what we're sharing and act accordingly. And so this is what we get to witness. And as we do so, we need to then come back to our business, realize that we did our part. We were fiduciary about what we were sharing. And at the end of the day, we're, we fulfilled our role. But then you brought up the personal side of it. The fact that you then went and decompressed where you would play the music or go out with your dogs. And I think that's healthy. We all need to have something that we're doing outside of work that is our own way of maybe through hobbies or passions or activities, decompress. We can basically take our energy and redirect it. And at the end of the day, stay healthy mentally, physically, spiritually. And that's something that's very important for our own sanity. And so I think that's very, mm -hmm. very good that we've brought up. Uh, let's talk about the dogs. I know this is something you're very excited about with the competitions and everything. <laughs> what kind of dogs do you have? I have a dog. Um, uh, in September, I got a puppy that um, I have not had a puppies for over 11 years. So it was like, oh, I forgot. <laughs> Lots of what energy. Having a puppy is like, you know, and I, I got really particular. She is a mixed breed. Um, she is Dachshund and Border Collie, and it was an on purpose breeding. It wasn't, you know, and I guess you could throw it in the category of designer dog. But I will tell you this Dachshund genetics, very strong in the world. Okay. <laughs> but um so she's nine months old now and we I, I because i used to have a pet dog training business um some years ago and i showed dogs and titled dogs and you know did a bunch of activities with my dogs and so that's what i want to do it's a really good physical outlet and a mental outlet and she is smarter than me i mean she is so smart it's scary but we um, last night we went to our barn hunt training. Barn hunt. Oh, this is a stab. It's so funny. Uh -huh. People think, oh, you're just going to turn a dog loose in the barn. It's going to go kill rats. No, that <laughs> isn't what it is. They're in tubes. The rats are very well taken care of. They're very safe. The tubes the dogs can't get into. They're heavy, heavy, heavy duty PVC. And it's just something for her to do because as her breed, mostly dachshund, she's that bred to do that. You know, she's bred to go chase varmints and stuff. Yeah. But we're also doing our obedience training. Um, she looks so grown up. She doesn't act grown up, but she looks so grown up. Sometimes I forget she's still a puppy. But um, I, it's it's been quite an adventure with her, mainly because of her intelligence. And also, she's a very different dog than I've ever had before. And so training her, I have to figure out different ways to train her. My old methods don't work. And we could say that about also about what we've been talking about, this, this heart-led niches and things like that, 
it's the world in itself is totally different than when I was, you know, doing journals and checkbooks and all that kind of stuff back in the day. So <clears throat> it's like having this dog in my life and noticing it's like, oh, I have to restructure. I have to rethink. I have to do that. Well, this is the same thing that we're talking about here is when we approach going out into the world or marketing our services out into the world, it's, it's like, oh, um, this isn't going to, this isn't working the same. So what can I do? It's like, so we have to be really flexible and shift and, and just keep paying attention because what we know is that this current environment of business and economic is, it, I want, I want to say volatile. That's not really, it's more like a, it's more like an intense roller coaster. <laughs> okay. It's a better, it's a better uh, appellation. Well, I can definitely say that your application of what you're describing is, I think, very true. Um, as we work with our clients, their businesses, they obviously are owners and so forth, but each one's going to have their own nuance. It's going to be different. And just whether it be like a child or like a pet, there's a lot of similarities, but there are unique things that make them very special. And that's what we want to really admire and uh, I think draw attention to. So I think that's a good analogy. So with your, your dog, has he, he or she won any competitions as of yet? Oh gosh, we haven't even entered. She is so far away from uh, being ready. Again, she's still a puppy. Yep, yep. And she'll be a puppy till she's about two years old. Okay. Well, keep she's training her. Be in the tra yeah. Well, this is one that, see, as a pet dog trainer, I would tell my clients at that time, I'd say, you're never not training your dog. And I want to put that here. You're never not training your clients either. Very good point. Whenever we're relating with our clients, whenever we are interacting with our clients, there is probably some essence of okay, we're 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 kind of guiding them into you know um, this these business ideas and these finances and and saying okay, let's make some informed informed business decisions based on all of this. And so this is all I'm doing with my dog, my puppy, is I'm guiding her into the behaviors that I want her to do in order to be a well trained person or person <laughs> <laughs> see yeah yeah <laughs> no you I, said I'm that training my people. i'm training my people but <laughs> uh, you know so that she's well mannered and she lives in the household and she's you know just all of those things that are important to me as well and so i'm it's i'm never not training her i wouldn't say I, i'm always training my clients that would be a little yeah i don't know well, what I would add is I like your analogy because as a business owner, I think accounting isn't the first thing that comes to mind. It's not that natural thing that they're drawn to where they're sensitive to commingling funds, cash management. They're not always sensitive to tax strategies. There's a variety of things that they're not really drawn to as they run their business that we can kind of bring to the surface and we can bring up as, hey, we well, need to put some thought or attention to this. And as we're bringing up, you know, you're your return on investment, your ROI, uh, th those are things that they need to be considering, but may not be at the forefront of their business style. But yet that's why we're there. We're training them, as you were describing, to help them realize these things are priorities, do need attention, should be things that they're thinking about. And by doing so, I think they're going to have better businesses. I think they're going to be much more efficient, much more profitable. They're going to be much more happy with the flow of how things are going in the organization. That's all because working with you, you were able to bring to their attention the importance of these very very uh, things that are accounting related. So I liked your analogy. I thought it was very well done. Uh, th that's <laughs> going to bring me to this. Um, where do you see the accounting profession going in the coming years? What do you see as you're running your business that's caught your attention that you're watching? Well, one of the things that I started exploring when I I made the decision to go into this niche, to niche. I haven't niched ever. And so this will be a, yeah. a first for MTB services. Okay. But I wanted to find out who is our, who is our next consumer? Who is the next consumer? And what I discovered is that it is the millennial demographic, closely followed by the Gen Zers. Okay. So, and, and I don't, I don't say that. I mean, we, we get a lot of um, social media and stuff slamming the millennials and the millennials are this and millennials are that. Well, I have, I live with two of them because I share a house with my eldest son and his family. And what is, when I go, has started going out and exploring this heart led niche that I'm interested in, 
what I discovered is that the people that I'm meeting out there fall into that demographic. Almost, I wouldn't say 100%, I would say probably in the neighborhood of about 90%. They're the ones who are most likely to going to have a, a side business. In fact, they're 188% more likely to have a side business. So I said, oh, if this is the next level of uh, consumer of my services, okay, which would be entrepreneurial, solopreneur, business owners, okay, then what is it about them? What do I need to know about them in order to interact effectively? Well, what you're describing there is, I think, a very natural ebb and flow of our economy. Here in the United States, particularly, we're very entrepreneurial minded. Uh, most of the economy is made, made up of solopreneurs and uh, small business. I think that's very natural to recognize that. And as an accounting firm, kind of draw, okay, how can we best service this community? And uh, as people start their businesses to supplement their incomes, as you're describing, I think it's very natural for them to then see, okay, this is a different client than a small business making a million, $3 million, $10 million in revenue. We've got to be able mm -hmm. to address their needs differently. Is that is that kind of what you're alluding to? Yeah, absolutely. Because we have to understand that these these consumers are, they're digital natives. They grew up with this. Yeah. Not only did they grow up with rapid ta technological change, they also grew up in economic disruption. Okay. Think about that because we've had this uh, probably three times now. If we look at it, you know, we go back far enough. They were born in the eighties. So the, this is what they've grown up with. So it's actually ex it opened them up and they have a greater will willingness to actually go out and explore and open a new businesses. But the other thing, too, is when we look at this, when I look at this, is I things I just didn't realize. I actually have to go to my son and daughter-in-law and say, answer this question for me because I don't I don't get it <laughs> not being that there. But they use their smartphone for almost everything. And one of the things it does drive me a little crazy, I have to be honest, but they also do their finances on their smartphone. Yeah. Now, even though it drives me a little crazy. I'm in the process right now of figuring out how do I provide services into that, that demographic that is this. Now, not every single one of them uses their smartphone, but those probably aren't going to fall into my niche. So we have to be part of the solution and we have to provide as automated a service as possible and this is like this is big on my plate right now is discovering how to do that they're yeah. you know they're they're just different they are so different <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you know this, Roger. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, what you're describing here is the fact that so many businesses today are running their their companies through their phones. They're accessing their their bank accounts through that. They're accessing their, yes. their accounting through that. Maybe it's QuickBooks and so forth. The point is, is they're running their business by their phone. And when you work yes. with a lot of trade businesses or people that are out and about, they don't carry a laptop necessarily. They're using their phone to make these business decisions, to check various things. And that's powerful to realize and understand that, that that client of yours is running their business very differently than perhaps how you're doing it sitting behind a, a, a computer at a desk. And that's powerful for us to actually then tailor our marketing, tailor our services, tailor, tailor how we deliver information to them, how we expect them to get us information. One of the common things that I do is obviously, like so many, is, is taking a picture of the receipt. Um, that's a, that's a thing five years ago that I don't know that was necessarily common simply because of the fact that you would take it, put it in a file, turn it over to the accountant. Well, now there's no paper trail. It's literally the picture. And the fortunate right. thing is, is the picture doesn't degrade the receipt. It would actually fade over time. So there's a lot of right. changes that you're alluding to that I think we need to just sit down and recognize that are now the new norm. And that's something yes. that's very important. So thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate that. Well, and and I use QuickBooks online. I, in fact, I've actually said, okay, I'm not even going to try and learn any of the other. I know there's other accounting software out there. I've just, yeah. it's like, I've reached the level of what I, what I want to, you know, I'm very particular about what I want to learn that's new for me. And I have never downloaded the QuickBooks online mobile app. But when I started talking to me about this and talking to people about this, I went, oh, my gosh, I am going to have to use, learn how to use that and yeah. use it on my, you know, not necessarily in my business, in the practice so much, but I do use it in the practice as well. Like you said, snapping a receipt. 
but also my personal because I keep my personal on QuickBooks Online. Okay. <laughs> keeps me keeps me going, you know, keeps me focused. So these things, you know, is it is simply that's not that's not the only thing because there's we've got to set up a background and that's one of the things that we're working on. Is we're setting up what can we do to walk out and say, okay, this is all you have to do. Because that's what I have to also discovered is that they don't want to be involved in a lot of uh, data entry and, yeah. you know, you know, things like that. What they really want is they want it to be as automated as possible. And there's a lot of avenues out there now. And I know that there are a lot of accounting professionals that have put in a lot of automation. I haven't been necessarily one of them. So I get to explore this, but I have a particular, I'm, it's like the, the niche I'm looking at is really very narrow. Mm, it's not narrow so much as it's, um, I don't know. I'm going to, right now I'm focusing on my community, which my community is currently Arizona, the state of Arizona. Yeah. So that's where I'm focusing. So that would make it smaller, but being able to to present, here you go, all you have to do is this, this, and this. That's it. And that becomes more inviting to these types of individuals, I think. Well, you're keeping it simple, and I like that. Um, let me do this. I want to go ahead and kind of summarize what we've been discussing here and come back to you for a closing thought. And uh, in doing so, see where we can take this. But the point is, is for the listeners, I do want to invite you to actually go check out the episode description. You're going to find there's some great information, free resources, and so forth. But one of the things that Troy brought up today happened to be that of a profit and growth expert. And you can learn there what it is to become a profit and growth expert for your clients, marketing, selling, and offering quality accounting services for them in an advisory capacity. This is meant to complement, obviously, the accounting, bookkeeping, and tax services that you're already providing. Now, in addition to that, as a summary, I do want to point out that I think Troy began this conversation just spot on with what I was hoping we would discuss, and that's the heart-led business model. Uh, it's basically finding that there are a number of clients out there in this particular niche or space that are really looking for relationship-based accounting. They're just longing for someone that's willing to take an interest in their business, that's willing to talk to them about their companies, and really take it a little bit further than just the financial reports. And it's that curiosity that if we can bring it to the conversation, they'll really appreciate that connection and in doing so become lifelong clients of ours simply because we brought more than just the numbers to the relationship. We were able to find that connection that really matters to them. And a lot of these heart-led businesses are definitely not financially driven by profit. They're more driven by culture, the impact that they're having on their communities, on the world. And they're really driven by culture and what it is that they do within their firms uh, their companies as it relates to the employees and so forth. And so at the end of the day, it's maybe not all numbers driven, but we could definitely add to their business model, their success and provide for them the quality accounting, bookkeeping and tax services that we should. I also like the fact that Troy was talking about technology. It's this realization that so many of the businesses that we're working with are running their, com their companies from their phones and understanding that the interactions we're having with them are probably going to be text-based. They're going to be uh, maybe phone-based, but they're also going to be doing everything from sending us data via their phones, getting information from us, from, our, from the communications that they're getting via their phones. All that becomes quite important to us as we realize that they're not sitting behind a computer like we are at a desk running their businesses. And so that's perhaps a niche that we can also be targeting, especially moving forward in these coming years. The other thing that I really appreciated from the conversation was the idea of how do we, when we related so well to our clients, decompress? How do we not take this home? And uh, obviously, Troy, with her music and with her, her uh, dog, are able to find some hobbies, some interactions, some things that are diverging, diversions from some of the stresses that may come while running the business. So loved the conversation today. Excellent insights, wonderful perspective. And I think what Troy is doing is absolutely amazing. She's an incredible person. Uh, one thing that I didn't ask, and I need this with your closing thought, Troy, you're going to be speaking at GrowCon. Tell us what you're speaking about at GrowCon and then give us your closing thought. How about that? <laughs> the topic that's near and dear to my heart, which is relationship. And what I'm really going to be talking about, and it's, it's it may, 
what I have discovered is that um, this word relationship and the word relate and the word relating, I want to talk about, I'm going to talk about how those three things are used within the accounting profession and how we can notice that we're always related. That's what I'm going to talk about. I love it. And a closing thought? Well, let's see. What would I like to say? I would like to say that I really, Roger, thank you so much for inviting me to talk about this. You, it's again, whenever I can speak about what is near and dear to my heart, it's, it's really, really valuable. And I think it's valuable out into the world as well. I, I want to thank you for like keeping it going. It's like exposing some of the things that, you know, um, in addition to what I was speaking about, it's 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 like I'm I'm really jazzed right now. It's like I want to run down and it's like open a booth and go. Okay, I'm your woo woo bookkeeper. <laughs> and, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it's like thank you so much. It's like this is very near and dear to my heart. I've been doing a lot of study and and research on this particular um, topic and this niche. No, oh, this is awesome. And I expect somebody from uh, just your comment is going to go out and start a bookkeeping business called Woo Woo Accounting. So that, <laughs> that's, that's going to be great. I want to hear that somebody actually that's great. went. great. I, yeah. I can't wait. I yeah. can't wait to see that as well. That's going to be funny. All right. So everyone, thank you for listening to the conversation today. This was a great discussion. Obviously, I want to encourage you, if you haven't already, to subscribe to the podcast. We're basically each and every week coming out with experts individuals that are running successful businesses with insights that they have for us to, in fact, have the, the premier accounting firm in our area. In addition to those episodes, set your reminders, your notifications, the various things that you can do to get those, those um, notifications of the new episodes. But I want you to go back and listen to the past episodes. We've got some great things that you can go back and binge watch. We have basically some playlists that you can listen to that are topical in nature so that you can actually get all those things that are related to either marketing, selling, client onboarding strategies, things related to tech stacks. We've got a playlist regarding um, uh, mental health, just a variety of things all designed to give you access to those experts, insights as to what it is you can be doing to become that great leader and have, in fact, that premier accounting firm in your area. In addition, we brought up GrowCon today. If you haven't already, definitely look and uh, schedule yourselves out to join us for GrowCon. It's an annual event where we get together with the owners of accounting firms. You get to experience things with your peers and learn from the best. You also get to hear from the experts on the stage and most importantly, work on your business so that you can in fact have that premier accounting firm in your area. The other thing that I want to point out is in the episode description, you'll actually find a number of other resources such as the um, free resources that we provide to you as you're working on your company. And then lastly, if you have any questions about these or other principles that you'd like to run in your business, give us a phone call. You can reach us at Universal Accounting Center at 801-265-3777, or you can visit us online at universalaccountingschool.com. But always remember this, if it's about accounting, it is universal. Take care of a great day and be safe out there.